Tyranids are one of the hallmark horde armies of Warhammer 40k. So when painting them, I wanted a scheme that was quick to execute, but still looked good on the tabletop. This scheme needed to accomplish a few key steps while still being easy and forgiving of mistakes that can come with speed or even getting steps completely out of order. Let's get to it. We're going to start from a zenithal prime in white over black with our basing texture of choice already applied. This will really help the colors stand out and give us some shading thanks to the natural translucency of the paints. For the exoskeleton, we're going with an icy blue, particularly Lothurn blue. This is an important color and was formerly known as ice blue. While I normally try to keep things fairly agnostic when it comes to manufacturers, I haven't really found a blue quite like it, even when mixing. If you come across one, let me know. This can be airbrushed on like we're doing here, or put on in a coat or two via a standard brush. We're trying to get as much of the upward facing or prominently visible surfaces without going too far underneath those pre-shaded areas. Don't worry if we get some on the carapace, as we'll cover that up later. Next, we're using a light gray with a bit of blue in it for an almost top-down highlight of the blue areas. This will give us a nice gradient that's not quite up to a pure white or a gray. There's not a lot of sharp lines here, so we want to avoid making any. Now for the chitin plates and claws, we're going with a dark chocolate brown. This will provide the contrast for our blue and give it a more natural overall look than something like a black or gray would. further sell the organic feel of the mini, we're going to use a purple to color in the shaded parts of the mini. Look for any spots where there might still be some of that black pre-shade showing through on our work so far, as well as anywhere you want there to be a shadow, and just lightly work this shade in. If you're brushing it on, Thin the shade way down so it doesn't color too strong, and just build it up until you're happy with the look. You can do this step before or after coloring in the chitin if you don't want to accidentally tint any of the brown. For all the joints, ribbing, tubes, and otherwise soft, fleshy bits on the mini, we're going to use a transparent magenta or pink wash. This should flow fairly easily over where we want it to, just try not to have too much of it on your brush when you go in. Don't press, and let the textures just gather up the paint. We're also going to use it to sort of underline the edges of the plates to kind of give a sense that they're maybe digging in or that they're freshly grown. Now we're going to use a dry brush of a light brown or umber to help the edges of the chitin plates and claws stand out a little more. Go light. It's okay if it takes a couple of passes to work up to a highlight that works for you.
one detail we can't forget is making sure to give this bug some teeth. Maybe not pearly whites, but a nice ivory or bone color should do the trick. This is the step to bring it all together, an all over enamel wash with a dark brown enamel. Get this everywhere and don't be stingy. It might look like you're ruining all your hard work up till now, but just trust the process and let the wash dry for about an hour or until it's no longer shiny. Once that is done, take some makeup sponges or Q-tips with either some mineral spirits or odorless white spirits and gently swipe over the surfaces to reveal the color beneath. Especially on the blue surfaces, you can control just how much you remove to decide how bright or dirty you want the final finish to be. Lastly, let's give our bug some sinister black eyes, wherever those eyes might pop up. Nothing too complicated here, just go in for a quick dot of paint, and if you get a little outside the lines, just swipe the edges clean with a clean brush or your finger to quickly clean it up. Now all that's left is to finish the mini's base up and varnish it. I've gone with something of a mountain wintry sort of base. I wasn't running a timer, but if I had to estimate, this took about an hour of hands-on working time. And with a lot of batch-friendly steps, this should do nicely for painting a whole swarm of bugs. I'll be doing just that real soon, so be sure you're subscribed if you want to check that out. As always, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button. And down there in the comments, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care and happy painting.